When I first heard Kenyans say that uh, the Kenyan government got free fertilizer from Russia and so uh, the free fertilizer should be given freely to farmers. At first I thought it was the normal politics. I had to do my own research and I found out that uh, in April the Russian deputy minister for foreign affairs had said that uh, Kenya was to get fertilizer, free fertilizer from Russia which will land in Mombasa in mid-May. It is now in September so I assume that uh, the free Russian fertilizer has arrived. Now People are saying that farmers should be given free fertilizer. I want to confirm that, uh, I want to talk under the assumption that uh, the Russians have sent the Kenyan government free fertilizer up to Mombasa. Now, if you are to tell every farmer to go and pick his or her fertilizer in Mombasa, You reach the port and you are given free fertilizer. The expenses you'll have spent will be more than the 6,500 that was costing there. So we have to put it in, into an element of government spending from Mombasa to say Kitale. That one would go about 500. So if, we, if the government has to give it free, then the government has to charge farmers 500. But let us look at it this way. And I'm talking as an economist. I did economics in my Form 5 and Form 6. So I want to reason like an economist. Uh, Kenyans, it was only the other day that Kenyans were buying fertilizer at 6,500. Before the Russians brought in their fertilizer, the government had made it to the level of 3,500. Now the Russian fertilizer is being sold at 2,500. I want us to reason like economists. Kenyans are used to buying fertilizer at 6,500. So if you sell it at 3,500, they feel it positively. Now if you continue further, I want to think that maybe the government reached somewhere and said, why don't we place it at 2,500? If they place it at 2,500, of course the Russian fertilizer will not last for long, especially when the Ukraine, Ukrainian war ends. When the Ukraine, this thing is just a red herring to make us either not support Ukraine or even be passive in our attack on Russia. So the issue of placing uh, the fertilizer here is something that is a short term, it will not be there. So if you give a farmer fertilizer at 500, assuming that uh, government transportation from the port to the farm is uh, on average 500. Now, if you have to charge 500 and then the, you, uh, the Russian fertilizer gets finished, you will be forced to now sell fertilizer at around 3,000. A farmer will feel it. You know, if you know the Kenyan mind, Kenyan w would not even notice when you go down. But if you come from 6,500, you go to 2,500, if you go back to 3,000, which I expect to be there next year, they will complain about the, the addition of 500. So what the government did was to cushion them so that they don't, in one year, 
they don't buy it at 6,500. Then the next year they buy it at 500, and then the third year they buy at 3,000. They have placed it at 2,500, where the government gets 2,000, so that when the Russian fertilizer ends, you find that uh, when the, fertilizer, the Russian fertilizer ends, you find that we will go back and start buying fertilizer at 3,000. Now, a farmer will not feel it the way he would have felt if he were to buy uh, at 500 shillings. The other thing I wanted to tell people, you see, buying fertilizer at 2,500, you are already buying it at 39% uh, of the 6,500. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk as an economist is this. Kenya, we don't have minerals, we don't have oil, we don't have natural resources. They, these are called welfare states. In a welfare state, instead of you, instead of the, of you paying taxes to the government, let's say that the government needs three trillion for development and the natural resources oil gold anything brings one and a half times that what happens is citizens in those countries don't pay taxes it is the reverse the government after selling the minerals or the oil or anything they remain with something. And that something, they divide it among the citizens of that country. So you find that instead of you paying taxes to the government, the government pays you. That is, where we call, that is what we call a welfare state. But a country like Kenya, which is, which is not a welfare state, it is the government which collects taxes from people. Now, the trick of taxing is funny. The government wants three trillion. How does it collect? It collects, uh, it does something that is populist. For example, it takes from one side and says that we are not going to tax from another side. But they prefer something that is called indirect tax. Indirect tax is the taxation where you are taxed but you do not no, or you do not feel it. Or if you feel it, you feel it very little. An example, for every petrol you buy in a petrol station, the government gets some money. For everything you get in a supermarket, you'll find that there is some VAT there, such, a, such things. That is how the government gets. It prefers getting, uh, you see, things like pay as you earn, that one you, you feel it because it is a percentage of your pay. But when you go to the supermarket and you want to buy a loaf of bread, you are told that bread is 65 shillings. What the supermarket does not tell you is that in the 65 shillings you are paying the government. So the government has to look for hidden costs, hidden taxation. In fact, that is the best way to tax people where they do not feel it, but you are taxing them. Because a country like Kenya, must get its money from taxes. Now, how is this connected to the fertilizer? Using my rough estimate, I have said that uh, the government spends 200 from the port to the farm. So, it spends 500. So, it is selling the fertilizer to you at 2,500 but it is spending 500. So the 2,000 is an indirect taxation. Uh, for as long as Russia is still giving us the fertilizer, the government is easily gaining 2,000 per bag. Uh, you may also have noticed that during the corona time, petrol shot down. Petrol shot down from 150 to 100 to 90 shillings. Now, a good government, I don't know whether the government did that, but a good government would do this. 
you are used to buying fuel at 150. Now, because of Corona, the fuel went to 90. A clever government would place fuel at 120 so that it can easily collect 30 shillings for every liter. And that is my small bit of explanation there.